lot of people wonder how to get their dream internship. The fact of the matter is that networking plays a huge role in that. It can allow you to further your career, create opportunities that didn't previously exist, find hidden jobs, and even increase your chance of admission to competitive programs. Hi everyone, I'm Andrew. And I'm Mark. And we're the Tech Twins. Today, we're talking about networking. What is it? How can you use it to best advance your career? and why it's important no matter your career field or age. Some people think networking is scary. Others think it's disingenuine. But we like to think of networking as building a long-term relationship by portraying your genuine self just with a career-focused twist. We define networking as meeting people for the purpose of expanding your business network. A key is that it's based on win-wins. You're looking to share your expertise and for other people to share theirs with you. It's really important to always be yourself maintaining the utmost level of integrity and respect when meeting someone for the first time, especially in a professional setting. In this point in our lives, the most common application of networking is when you're looking for internships or that first job, where networking can help you secure a first round interview. Coming into college, Andrew and I both knew that we really wanted to work for Apple. So, starting our freshman year, we attended every event that they came to. Resume critiques, tech talks, info sessions, career fairs, and we tried to, one, build relationships with the recruiters, and two, understand what Apple was looking for in potential intern and full-time hires. This worked out very well, especially since we started so early, because we built strong relationships with the UC Berkeley Apple recruiters that led to them passing around our resumes for both of the internships that we got at Apple. Then, one of the recruiters moved to work for Google X, Google's research and development division. And through a mutual connection, another moved and now works at McKinsey and Company. All of a sudden, our small network that we had nurtured from freshman year had grown into people who are working at many top companies that we might want to work at in the future as well. So it just goes to show that networking is not just important for what happens in the moment, but can be helpful for the future too. It's also important to know that the same recruiters come back to your campus every year. So if you start building the relationships from freshman year, it will become increasingly valuable as the years go on. Networking is important for six main reasons. First, the hidden job market. According to a UC Berkeley career counselor, 80% of jobs are filled before they're ever even posted online. This is because they are often filled with referrals. According to a 2016 LinkedIn report, 70% of people hired in that year reported knowing someone at the company that they were eventually hired at. Second is the six second rule. The six second rule means that recruiters only look at your resume for about six seconds on average. And while it's possible to have a resume pop out in that time period, it's often highly unlikely. So networking is another way to have your application considered uh, at a higher level of depth, and sometimes if you get a referral from someone who works inside of the company, this can even mean an automatic interview. Third, think like a recruiter. Recruiters are looking for the best people to fill their open spots. So if you know you're a great fit for the role, reach out to the recruiter, and if you're not a good fit but know someone else who is, pass their resume around. They'll most likely help you out in the future too. Fourth is recruiter rotation. Recruiters move around from company to company, and sometimes they only stay at companies for a period of several months. So if you network with a recruiter and build a strong relationship, if they were to move to a new company, that could be even more valuable to you because then now you have connections at two different companies. Fifth, the real world. What if you wanna change roles in the future? When you're in the real world, there are no career fairs. So if you think that you wanna switch roles in the future, start networking now. Sixth is to reduce the employer's risk. So think about the job search process. As a candidate, you know that you're a great fit for the role, but the employer doesn't know whether you're a good or a bad candidate. And they're trying to use different assessments like the school that you went to, your past experience, potentially even your GPA, to determine whether you're going to thrive in the role and add value to the company. They're doing this because a bad hire can cost a lot, whether that be in time, money, or resources. So they look for outside signals to help indicate whether or not you're a good or a bad candidate. One of these signals that can be extremely helpful to you is a referral. A referral is when someone inside of the company says, oh, I think this person is a great fit for this role. This allows the employer to see that someone on the inside who knows how the company works thinks that someone on the outside would be a good fit. So the risk is reduced and you now have a higher chance of being hired. 
but sometimes it can be hard to find the best way to network without seeming like you're constantly pestering someone. First, you need to decide who you're going to network with, then you can decide on the best approach. You can network with a variety of different people, but the common thread should be that your connection should be career focused. Personally, we've networked with alumni of our schools, mm -hmm. professors, people who attend similar programs as us, students who have won awards that we'd like to win in the future, etc. There are two types of networking, direct and indirect. Direct networking is when you have a specific goal or outcome that you're trying to achieve. And indirect networking is when you don't have a specific goal or outcome, but you're just trying to build relationships for something in the future. For direct networking, you can do that in person or online. In person, this means attending career fairs or info sessions, or setting up coffee chats or informational interviews. We've found that by far the best way of connecting with people is through LinkedIn. And LinkedIn's not just great for creating your own profile so other people can find you, but it's also really good for finding alumni of your school, people in an industry that you might want to be in in the future. But just be aware that most people will not accept your connection request unless you have a pretty compelling reason for sending one. So like Andrew said, sending a blank connection request won't work. But what might work is sending a personalized message that says why you're messaging someone, what your point of connection is, and why you're interested in having them as a connection in your network. But if this sounds too out of your comfort zone, pro tip, check out LinkedIn's new mentor feature. People who volunteer to be mentors are recommended to you and you can reach out to them individually. We've used it to connect with people at Gap, Amazon, and LinkedIn, people who we would have never met had we not used this feature. Moving on to indirect networking. You can indirectly network both in person and online. In person, you can get involved in an existing project or start something new. By starting something new, you can show leadership skills and even meet leaders that are in the same industry that you want to be in. And even if everyone in your group that you start is the same age as you, that's also really good because as each of you advance in your career, you'll be able to tap into this mini network that you created. If you decide to start something new, what we've experienced is that the most successful projects and the most fulfilling ones are the ones that are of service to others. That can be something in your community. Online, indirect networking is expanding your online presence. There might not seem to be an explicit reward for sharing your thoughts online via weekly LinkedIn articles or expanding your online presence by starting your own personal website, for example. But to a future employer, these can show that you take initiative, aren't afraid to have an opinion, and enjoy engaging and developing your community. So while you might not need to show these traits now, these could be really important when you're looking for a job one or two or three or four years down the line. To synthesize everything that we've talked about in this video, we'd like to leave you with three main takeaways. One, be proactive. Two, make genuine connections. And third, and most importantly, have fun. First, be proactive, not reactive. Seek out your own network. Opportunities typically don't just land in your lap, so by putting yourself out there, you expand the likelihood that you will expand your network. Second, make genuine connections. Don't spam people, but come from a place of curiosity and respect when asking for help from someone, and from service when doing a project. And third, have fun. When you're in a field that you love, meeting people who are just a few steps ahead of you should be exciting and should motivate you to work harder towards your goals. And that's it for this week. Comment below, like this video, subscribe, and let us know if you have any ideas for future videos. Thanks everyone. Thanks.